Hey guys, this is Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com. In today's video, I continue on with my water series where I focus on taking interesting images based all around water. Today, I'm gonna to be shooting family photos out on the ocean and hopefully I do not destroy all of my camera gear. sponsored by Skylum's Luminar photo editing software. Luminar is radically different from all other imaging software that I've ever tried. Most other software requires you to learn complicated steps and techniques to achieve your desired results. But with Luminar, all of your editing can be done with easy to use sliders, which makes processing your photos both quick and intuitive. Perhaps the coolest feature of any software that I've seen ever is Luminar's AI Sky Replacement. With a simple click of a button, you can easily change a boring sky into the perfect sky for both your clients and your portfolio. This is a complete game changer for all photographers, but especially for architectural photographers, landscape photographers, or if you take pictures for Instagram. Luminar also recently introduced AI Augmented Sky, which allows you to perfectly place exciting elements into your sky without having to use complicated masks or blending modes. So no matter if you've just recently picked up a camera and editing photos kind of intimidates you, or if you're a professional photographer looking to simplify your workflow, Luminar could be the perfect software for you. If you want to try Luminar completely for free, head over to the description and the link below, or if you're the type of photographer who likes to buy their software outright and don't want to deal with any subscription fees, if you head to the link in the description below, you can actually save a little bit of money if you decide to buy this software. So the goal for today's shoot is to take a few cool images of my friend Francis and his three kids as they play out in the ocean. They absolutely love surfing, and so I thought it'd be interesting to try to take some portraits that exploit kind of that over-under perspective so that the viewer feels like they're out in the ocean with them. In order to achieve this effect, I'm gonna be using a couple Iwa Marine underwater housings. These can fit both small and large DSLRs. One reason I love these underwater housing bags better than I love the underwater housings that are built for specific cameras is that you can actually fit a strobe in here right on the hot shoe. And so to make my life a little more difficult, but hopefully make these photos even cooler, I'm going to try to add some off-camera strobe to give these images a lot more directionality and some interesting lighting that I'm not gonna be able to get out on location. So here we are out at the beach, and typically you'd probably come out here during sunset, especially if you wanna use strobe because the light would be really low, you're gonna get those dramatic skies, and your flash is gonna be a lot more powerful. But many shots that you would see at a beach are actually shot much earlier in the day. You want the water to be really blue, have a lot of color in it, you want it to look inviting, you want it to look like an image that people are out in the middle of the day having fun. So the big challenge with this is hopefully my strobe is gonna be powerful enough to actually light either as a fill light or as a backlight, but I think I'm gonna have to get my light really close. If I shoot out this way, I can get a straight horizon. I can even get this distant island of Viaquez out here. But if I shoot in this direction, I can get kind of the city in the background and maybe even some palm trees. So I think both directions work well. Our sky out here is kind of ugly. The sun right now is behind a huge cloud, so it's a little softer than I might anticipate in a few minutes. But there's also no beautiful clouds in the sky, so I anticipate that I'm gonna have to drop in a fake sky, but because I'm gonna be shooting on the water with a nice horizon, I think that's gonna be really easy. Now, I've been shooting with the Iwa Marine bag for several years, and one thing I know when you're trying to shoot in water, especially if you want that nice water line, is that it helps to shoot in the middle of the day when the sun is directly overhead because all the rays of light are gonna be cast straight down and the water is gonna be the most colorful and the most clear. When the sun gets behind a cloud or if you shoot later in the day, you're gonna find that a lot of times your water is gonna go really dark and you're not gonna have any of those vibrant colors. Here today, I can tell we have this seaweed that's coming in and we also have a lot of turbulence with the waves. So I'm not exactly sure how clear the water is gonna be, but I know that I can still leave getting a really cool shot where the water is coming up over some of the lens. It's gonna be a shot that you just can't get without an underwater housing. So as I explained in the studio, I have two Iwa Marine bags. One of them's gonna have our video camera so that Lee can come out here and film. The other one's gonna have a D850 with a Tamron 24 to 70. It's the widest lens that I have that will still fit in this bag. But I've also outfitted Lee's camera that he's gonna be shooting with with a Profoto A1 strobe directly on top. And because he's gonna be shooting video and I have a trigger on my camera, 
I'm gonna be able to use him kind of as an assistant and I can place him exactly where I want the light. He can still get video and then remotely I can fire his flash while everything is protected in the bags. So I really have two options here. I can shoot all natural light or with Lee's assistance, I should be able to pop a little bit of flash into my image, but I don't know if we're gonna be able to overpower the sun. So let's get in the water and see what we can do. And look up over your shoulder. There you go. All right, look back over this way. You're going to be looking at those buildings over there. And give me a serious face. Put your, your elbow right here. Yeah, like you're paddling out. And get, yeah, like that. You're, you're ready to go. model. She is holding that pose. She has it. Forever. <laughs> Y'all can all be goofing off. Can you come just wait just a little bit and then dad you can go that way just a little bit. <laughs> All right, you guys just look past me, so look like over there. The key with this type of photography is to simply shoot a lot and be prepared for a high fail rate. But now that I feel confident I've snagged a few great images, let's head into the studio and see what we can do with these final images in post. All right guys, so here we are in the post-production studio and I'm gonna go through some of my favorite images. I have to warn you, shooting in an underwater casing out in the ocean with a strobe light is one of the more difficult types of photo shoots that I would ever do. And as you'll see, I really only got a few keepers. My goal was to get literally one shot of each one of the setups. If I could get one image, I feel like that was a pretty good success rate. So let me go through these images. Right now we are in Skyloom's Luminar 4. I'm gonna edit everything in here since they've sponsored this video and I'm gonna show you a few tricks that I like to use in post-production that actually make a huge difference in the way your images turn out. And a lot of them are non-destructive. I'm not really changing pixels, I'm just massaging some of the colors to get an image that looks really nice. So here's the first shot that I took. I really love this image. I feel like it's just a boy out in the middle of the water. I love that you can see his board and everything's distorted on the bottom. I'm not gonna go through all of the edits that I did, but here is the final image that I wound up editing and you can see how dramatic this is compared to the original file. But again, I didn't really change any pixels. I wasn't cloning or uh, manipulating anything. Here's another image that I thought was kind of cool. His body's extremely warped because of the magnification of the water underneath, but I wound up not editing this one. Here's another shot that's kind of cool. You can see Lee in the far right with the strobe going off. Now here is my final edit. I'm gonna walk you guys through how I did all of this. If I come up here to our eyeball, I can click between the original and then my final edit, and you can see this is pretty dramatic. I really love the way this image looks. Even though I'm shooting kind of family portraiture, maybe, I think this has a commercial look, and I have no doubt that this image will actually go into my portfolio. I'm super excited about this. So let me reset everything, and let's start from the very top. So let's come up here to the very top. Let's go to light, and typically I like to change my temperature and tint, although I feel like Everything looks pretty good here. Let's come down and start playing with some of the exposure. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump up my smart contrast. And if I slide this to the right here, you can see what it does. It just gives a little bit of pop to my image. I already imagine I'm gonna change my sky. So as I do all of these edits, I'm not really concerned with the sky because I think I'm gonna change that so that it fits the light direction a little bit better with the strobe. But my highlights, I may wanna take down just a touch. 
And then I know a lot of people get in the habit of boosting their shadows because they have a raw file and they want to bring the most amount of detail out. If I do that and start going to the far right here, I think it's actually flattening the image out. So I'm going to instead pull my shadows down, maybe pretty significantly. Let's come all the way down to like minus 40. And you can see that gave a lot of nice contrast in his hair and kind of the background scene back here. Now in Luminar, if you wanna get access to the pure whites and the blacks, you have to hit this advanced tab. Let's bump the whites up just a little bit, just to give a little bit more pop. And then let's pull the blacks down just ever so slightly. These controls can really go far if you start manipulating your brightest and darkest areas within your histogram. So I don't wanna change those too much. All right, let's close the light module. Let's go down to AI Enhance. And this is one of their artificial intelligence modules. I always like to play with this just to see what it will do. Sometimes it's a little over the top, but in many cases, this can save you a ton of time. So let me just bump this up ever so slightly and see maybe if I put it at like 25 and then turn this on and off. It's upping the saturation just a little bit and it's bringing my sky back just a touch. Again, I'm not too concerned with the sky at this moment, but I do like what it's doing. If I go all the way to the right, honestly, for Instagram or something, it doesn't look too bad. It, it looks like it's adding some kind of sharpening or clarity that I don't really love, but for many people, this might be kind of a finished image, but I'm gonna bring this back down to 25 just to make it a little more subtle. And now let's go to my favorite editing tool, and that is the color module. Now here we have the saturation and the vibrant slider. Now one thing that I've noticed over editing for a decade now is I feel like typically I will bump my vibrance, but then I will compensate by pulling my saturation down. That's a tool probably a lot of you guys do. In this case, I think I might try to bump up my saturation just a little bit because this does feel like a very vivid image. Maybe I go up to like 10. And then some of the skin tones that I feel like are getting a little blown out, I'm actually going to adjust them here in the advanced setting. So if you click this advanced setting tab, you get access to all of your colors with your hue, saturation, and luminance sliders. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to play around with the skin tones here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is let's go over to red and just start from left and go all the way right. And I typically like to come down to saturation and I like to see with the saturation slider, what the red is actually doing. And you can see it's not affecting all of his skin tone. I think it's just kind of affecting the shadows and it's not doing as much as what I anticipate the orange might do. So let's play around with this for a little bit. I think I wanna desaturate this quite a bit. Maybe I come down to like 50, maybe like 55, somewhere around here. And then let's play around with the luminance. Now, if I bump this, and decrease it, you can see what it's doing. It's changing a lot of the tones, in this case, kind of in the shadows, like on his cheek, but not on the area that's lit by the strobe. I think I wanna pull this down just a touch, maybe like minus nine. And then finally, let's go up to hue, and using the hue slider, I can really change the tonality here. Now, I think this is a little too yellow. Let me come down to like maybe minus, maybe minus 20, and that's gonna introduce a little bit more reds into the shadow. I think that looks really nice. I think the big problem is gonna fall in the orange color. So let's go over to orange and let's do the same thing. Let's go to the saturation and you can see by moving this, I'm affecting the skin tones a lot more. If I bring all the saturation down, it almost seems like it's affected even the red slider. So what I'm gonna do is maybe pull this down to like 20, 25, somewhere around there. I feel like that has fixed some of the saturation problem. Let's come down to the luminance, and you can see if I pull this down, that looks really unnatural, and if I pull it up, it starts to blow out the channel. So I think where I wanna be is maybe around 25, somewhere like right around here looks pretty good. And then finally, let's come up to the hue, and let's see if we can push the hue in a direction that makes the skin tones look as natural as possible. Maybe pushing them just a little bit towards the warmth, since we are lighting him with a strong strobe. Something like that might look pretty good. Let's come over here to yellows, same thing. Doesn't feel like the yellows are really doing anything other than affecting the tip of the surfboard. So maybe I just bring the yellows down just a touch. I don't think I really even need to do anything there. Let's go to the greens. Again, greens are only really affecting this highlight in the water. 
So I don't think I really want to mess with that. Now when we get to the cyan, this is where we're going to start to be able to change both the water color and the sky color. I probably want to boost this up just so I can get more saturation out of the water. Maybe something around 42. Let's play with the luminance. And I could boost this up and make it really clear. I think I'm actually going to pull it down a bit. Maybe around like 35 just to darken it up a little bit, make it a little more contrasty. And then with the hue, let's bump this around. If I go to the left, I can make it that turquoise tropical water. And if I go to the right, I can make it a little bit more blue. I actually am gonna go for the blue setting here. Something like that looks cool to me. Let's go over to the blues. This is probably gonna affect our sky the most. Again, I like to start with saturation, just so I can see where I'm going. I don't want to make this image nuclear. I want to pull this down a little bit. So maybe I pulled my saturation on the blues down just a bit so that my skies don't look too crazy. Maybe somewhere around minus four. And then the luminance. I'm going to try to replace my sky, so I'm not too concerned about this, but I do think I want a more dramatic sky that feels more like sunrise. So maybe just to work with this, I'll pull the luminance down quite a bit maybe around 65, somewhere like that. And then let's go to the purple or violet one here. I think this is violet. I don't think this is really doing anything except maybe a little color on his back. I'll just pull that down. And then the purple, I don't think that's doing anything either. So I think that's a pretty good stopping point there. So you can see if I turn this on and off, look how far I've come just with the color sliders. I've been able to manipulate the colors and give the water a cool tone. I've been able to tone down the skin tones. I feel like the shadows and highlights, especially right here on his cheek, they pop out a little bit more. It almost looks like I've done a skin retouch, even though I haven't done anything with the pixels themselves. So I like this kind of muted color scheme here. I think this looks a little bit more commercial. If I turn this off, I feel like it's just too overly saturated. So now let's tackle the sky. I feel like this sky looks too blue. It looks too middle of the day because it was the middle of the day. But because I'm lighting him with the strobe to the right, I think I need a sky that looks like the sun is rising out of frame on the right hand side and my clouds might have a little bit more warmth to them maybe even a little bit more density so that it looks like early morning skies. So if I come down here to my creative tab, I can come up here to AI sky replacement. This is probably one of the coolest modules in any piece of software that I've seen. You can replace skies with literally a click of a button. Now with this image, I might have to adjust some things, but let's come up here to sky selection and Luminar, they give you a bunch of different skies right here that you can pick from. But what's really cool is you can load your own custom skies. And I have a bunch of sky images here that I've gotten from the tutorial that we did with Mike Kelly called the Ultimate Sky Library. And I'm gonna look for an image that just has just a lot of color, but also kind of an overcast look to it. I don't want anything too crazy like these really bright sunsets. I definitely don't want anything like these where it looks like you know the end of the world or something. I think something like maybe these up here look pretty nice. I don't want the sun in my frame. So maybe this one here would look pretty nice. And as you can see, it has dropped the sky in here, and that looks pretty, pretty good. You can see it messed up right here on the board. It's kind of overlapping a little bit, but look at his hair. That looks really nice. And if I toggle this on and off, you can see the natural sky that I had, although it's kind of nice, it doesn't fit the light on his face. It almost looks like his face is blowing out a little bit from the strobe. But if I turn on my sky replacement, now all of a sudden, it feels like he's paddling out to catch the first waves of the day, and I think this looks really, really cool. Now, this file, you can see the horizon here, and that looks unnatural, so I need to pull down my horizon just a little bit, so maybe if I just come down here to, I don't know, like 25 or so. Now my horizon is actually the edge of the waves and not the edge of the uh, horizon in my sky replacement. I can also come down here to relight scene and adjust the way the light is hitting the main part of my image. I'm gonna come all the way down here and relight it all the way on the far left. And then sky global, this is going to change the way that my sky blends into my scene. If I pull it all the way to the right, you can see the sky is starting to eat into the highlights of my clouds. I definitely don't want that. So I'm gonna come down and bring it, I don't know, around seven, see what this does. 
I feel like that's blending in in a way that you can't really tell where the highlights meet the sky. That looks really nice. Now, if I come up here to info, I can see the details on this image. I was shooting at 1 200th of a second, 24 millimeters, but I was also shooting almost wide open at f3.5. So because of that, I don't want my sky to be sharp, especially when you can see the background back here is really blurry. So one thing I want to do is come down here to sky defocus, and I want to start blurring my sky so that it matches the depth of field that the image was shot in. So I don't want my clouds to be really sharp because it wouldn't make sense from a depth of field standpoint. You can also flip the sky. Let me do that real quick and I'll show you how unrealistic this looks in this particular image. I wouldn't have the sun rising on the left and then casting light on the right. So I'm gonna flip this back to the original orientation. And then some other things that you can adjust here. You can do the atmospheric haze, but you can also change the uh, sky temperature. So if you feel like it needs to be warmer, you could push this over to the right. If you need it cooler, you can push it to the left. So this gives you a lot of control so that you can match the exact toning that you want. I think here, I'm gonna leave this at zero. I think that looks pretty good shot the way that it is. And then I can also control the exposure. If I want my sky to be darker, I can pull it to the left. And if I need it brighter, I can pull it to the right. I think somewhere, let's play around with this, maybe right here looks pretty good. So this looks pretty good. I do need to fix some of the uh, masking right down here. And then I can also see up in his hair, it has not done a perfect job there. So I can come down to edit mask. And in this case, I'm gonna hit luminosity mask. And this is basically going to build a new mask based on the brightness of the scene. And because the sky behind him is so bright, it should do a much better job than just using the sliders alone. And there we go. You can see this mask now has done his hair perfectly, but I still have a little issue right here on the surfboard. So if I want, I can just come down to edit mask, hit brush. So in this case, I'm gonna hit erase. Let me clean up the surfboard just a little bit. I wanna erase some of the sky that is creeping into the board here. And then I'll brush in just a little bit of the horizon here just to kind of clean up that little space under the board. So just by painting a little bit on there, I feel like we've got our sky looking really good. So I think this is my final image. Let me come up here to the before and after. So you can see how big of a difference those color sliders really made and then dropping a new sky that fits the light direction a little bit better. I feel like this is really a final image. And sometimes I like to just zoom out and see it a little bit smaller and see if it has the punch or I can look up here on my thumbnail I feel like that's got a really cool color grade to it. So let's move on to the next set of images. So here was one, I didn't feel like this really worked. I feel like she was a little blank. This might be my favorite image from the entire session. I just think this looks super commercial and advertising. Like this looks like the cover of a clothing catalog or something. This looks amazing. I've already edited this image, so I'm not gonna go through this one, but I'll show you what it looked like straight out of camera. So that's a pretty dramatic change. Again, I didn't really change any pixels at all. I just simply played around with a lot of the sliders. This is the next image that I took, and this is really kind of the goal I had for this photo shoot, where you could see under the water while at the same time having something above the water. This looks really interesting to me, and I'm glad I got a shot that turned out the way that I anticipated. Let me quickly go through and edit this one because there are a few other techniques that I wanna do for the final edit. So I'm not gonna walk through all of the different settings that I think I need for the light. I'm just gonna go through this quickly, but I do wanna bring up my exposure just a little bit. We'll add some smart contrast. We'll pop the highlights considerably. I'm gonna knock down my shadows, bump my whites, and pull down my blacks. Now for this image, I am going to keep the natural sky in there. I don't wanna change anything about this image at all. I want this just to be a straight out of camera raw conversion. So as I go through this, I am going to try to get my sky to look as good as possible. Let's go to AI Enhance. Let's really knock this up and see where we can get with this. Maybe this can do most of the work for me. And because I do care about the sky, let's bump up the sky enhancement just a bit. All right, we're back down here with color. Let's bump the saturation up and let's knock our vibrance up as well. Normally I wouldn't do both of these. I'd probably desaturate a little bit, but I think this image is so tropical. Her colors on her bathing suit are so interesting. I think this image is just calling for a lot of saturation. Let's go back here to our colors and let's play around with our saturation. Let's drop this down just a touch. 
Let's open up our luminance and let's play with our hues. Here I think I can go a little bit more towards the red because it feels like she's being lit with the hard sun even though that is just my flash in a position right over the camera. And then orange, we can either desaturate her skin tones beyond what they should be or we could push them to the point where they start to blow out. For this, let's just bump up the saturation just a touch. And then finally hue, let's push it towards green or to red. I think we wanna go towards red. And maybe something like right here is pretty good. You can see yellows aren't doing a whole lot except that one area of her bathing suit and then it's also making her legs go a little crazy. So I'm gonna bump this up a little bit just to bring out the color in the bathing suit but then we can also drop the luminance so that the skin below the water isn't too crazy. Our water here is very green, so I wanna play around with that. That's probably gonna be under the green slider. Let's pull our saturation down and let's push it towards blue. And let's just give it a little bit of lift in the lightness. Cyan, I'm gonna bump up the saturation here. I'm also gonna bump up the luminance just a bit. And let's push this to blue as well. Maybe go to like, let's make this really blue. Now I've pushed the blues a little over the top, but I think I can adjust that here in the blues. Let's pull the saturation down considerably. We will open up the luminance and make it a little bit brighter. And here, if I push the blues to the right, you can see my clouds start to go purple. So I wanna actually pull this down, maybe to like minus 17, 18, somewhere around here. I feel like that makes my clouds look bright, but without them going purple. And then in this image, besides her bathing suit, there's really no violets or purple, so I'm gonna leave those sliders alone. All right, so I feel like the colors look pretty interesting here, but what I wanna do is I wanna create a gradient that maybe plays around with the difference in exposure between underwater and above water. So if I come down to this toolbox labeled Pro and hit Adjustment Gradient, I can now set a gradient here. I'm gonna spin this around so that it matches the shape of my wave. And let's start pulling down the exposure a little bit. I don't want underwater to be too bright. I think that looks a little distracting. I think I want it to go a little darker. Let's increase the contrast a bit, make the blacks and whites pop a little bit more. The shadows, I do think I can lift those up a little bit, maybe somewhere right around here. The highlights, because it's underwater, I'm gonna pull these down pretty significantly. And here with the warmth, this is where I can control kind of the overall tone of my water. If I go warm, it starts to make it look putrid green. It, it looks like she's in like a toxic environment. But if I pull this down to the blue, it starts to look more like the deep ocean blue. So I'm gonna go down to like maybe minus 40, somewhere around here. And then vibrance, if I push this up, you can see I'm getting a lot of the, uh, the transitions and highlights to start to have this unnatural look. So I'm actually gonna pull my vibrance down, maybe like to 30 or 40, somewhere around here. I feel like that now desaturates the color underwater a little bit more. So if I turn this on and off, you can see what I've done to my water. I've now made it darker, a little less saturated, but I've also made it much more blue, which I think works well with the sky and the idea that she's out in the deep ocean. The final thing that I wanna do is I wanna do a little dodging and burning. I feel like there's some darkness up here and I, I might wanna pull out some highlights specifically in the water tone. So if I come down here to dodge and burn, I can start painting and then I can set this strength maybe to like 25 is probably a good area. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna open up that little highlight up there in the sky. And then maybe right where the wave is at the peak, I can bring back some of that highlight just so that the wave itself has a little more shape. And I can just give some definition here. I can dodge the surfboard a little bit. And then if I feel like that might be a little over the top, I can come down to the overall amount of my dodge and burn and maybe I just bump it up just a little bit. And then the final thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a color enhancer. I'm not gonna play with the brilliance or the warmth, but I'm gonna come down here to color contrast. Let's just drag this up just a touch, maybe to four. And if I toggle this on and on, it's super subtle but I feel like it's just making her skin tone pop just a little bit. And then a technique that a lot of people use is they like to make the highlights warm, but then make the shadows a little bit cooler. And you can come down and do that here with the split color warmth. I can go with the warmth and I can bump this up 
If I go too strong with it, you can see I'm starting to oversaturate her skin again, but maybe just really subtly, maybe take this to seven. And then with cool, I can pull this down to either a purple color or to a blue color. And I think if I take this down, I don't know, let's really push this down to 24 or so. It's now added this nice blue tonality through all of the shadows. And if I turn this on and off, I really love what this is doing. It's making the top part of the image that's lit with the strobe. She's got all these punchy warm colors in the highlights, but then all of the shadows below, they're going a lot more blue. So I think this really puts the final touch on this image. And if I zoom out a little bit and just give this a once over, that looks great. I could come back up here to the normal toolbar and let's go to color. And I could just pull the saturation down just a touch if I wanted. If you feel like that was a little too over the top, I actually like a little more saturation in my final image. So I'm gonna bump this back up to, I don't know, 22. And let's just look at a few more of the other images that I thought were really good. I liked this image too. It's just a different shot from the previous one where she's looking uh, kind of more isolated and you can see the board a little bit better. And then finally, I got her dad and her younger brother. These two are actually twins, the two that I shot. And I love this image with the whole family. I have the same effect where you can see their legs and everything below the waterline. That's really cool. And then I got a couple more just uh, of them paddling and stuff. One issue you will have shooting underwater is you are gonna find that a lot of images look great, but then you have this water drop or this haziness because some water is on the glass itself of the port that covers your lens. So that's another area that makes this kind of photo shoot really difficult is that you'll get a great image, but then one person's face might be obscured or you might have a water droplet over somebody's body and you want that nice and clean so that it doesn't look like you're shooting in a one underwater housing. That's definitely an issue that I had with many of these photos. But again, when you're shooting through an underwater housing, at least for me, I'm hoping just to get a handful of keeper images because I know my rejection rate is magnitudes greater than it is when you're shooting just above water without any kind of water splashing on your lens. So another fun photo shoot in this water photo series that I've been doing all summer long. If you wanna get your own copy of Luminar 4, head to the link in the description below. You can download it, try it for 30 days. If you enjoy content like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel below because we release photo related videos every single week. Also head over to fstoppers.com where you can check out full articles on photography and videography. And if you wanna learn from some of the best photographers in the world, head over to fstoppers.com store where you can check out our full length tutorials.